To make you the smartest person in the room, we need to understand a little bit of the history of litigation involving the Second Amendment, and that includes a connection between dementia, Alzheimer's, and yes, Mark Smith and the Second Amendment. We're going to connect these dots and explain how this all played a major role in our Second Amendment rights historically. You're not going to want to miss the connection of these dots when we get back. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of the Four Boxes Diner, proud American gun owner, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar, and author of the brand new best-selling book, Israel Disarmed, What the 10-7 Attacks Teach Americans About the Right to Bear Arms. Check it out on Amazon, Israel Disarmed. All right, folks, so given some of the allegations and concerns about um, whether or not Joe Biden has uh, some sort of early form of dementia, whether he's just got some neurological issues uh, or whatever he may or may not have. I'm not here to speculate about that, just to sort of flag this is obviously going around as to whether or not uh, Joe Biden has the mental acuity to continue on as president and to be reelected. That's a topic for a different video. I just want to point out something historically that this is not the first time that our right to keep and bear arms has touched fingers with issues associated with dementia and possibly even Alzheimer's. And it's important for you to understand this history because, again, to be the smartest person in the room, there's a lot of little information, the little things that make a big difference in turning you from just an ordinary Second Amendment supporter into a uh, true expert in the Second Amendment, the history of the Second Amendment, the right to keep in their arms, uh, the Supreme Court litigations, and so on. Specifically, I want to go back in time just a little bit. As you may recall, in 2008, 2008, this timeline is going to be very important, so listen carefully to the timeline. In the year of our Lord 2008, we know that the U.S. Supreme Court decided the District of Columbia versus Heller case that said that the Second Amendment protected an individual, an individual right to keep in their arms in a decision written by Justice Scalia. That was a 5-4 to four decision. A 5-4 to four decision in the majority included one Justice Samuel Alito, who, of course, subsequently wrote the decision in McDonald and, of course, uh, of course, wrote a very important concurrence in the Caetano case, Justice Alito. So why are we talking about dementia and Mark Smith and our Second Amendment rights in this context? Because you need to understand how this came about. Specifically, in the year of our Lord, 2005, 2005, Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, the first Supreme Court picked by President Ronald Reagan, announced her decision to retire from the United States Supreme Court. She made that decision in order to spend more time with her husband, who at that time, unfortunately, was a major, he, he had been a prominent lawyer, but unfortunately, uh, Sandra Day O'Connor's husband had uh, come down with a form of dementia and Alzheimer's. And Justice O'Connor had decided that she wanted to retire from the Supreme Court in 2005 in order to take care of her husband, who had early stage Alzheimer's and eventually passed away from that. A terrible story, uh, obviously. But in 2005, when she stepped down, the president at the time was President George W. Bush. George W. Bush, if you may recall, after Senator Day O'Connor retired, he initially nominated Harriet Myers, Harriet Myers, to the U.S. Supreme Court. This caused a uproar among many conservative scholars, conservative intellectuals, uh, conservative politicians. Uh, Republicans, and all sorts of people that were very concerned about the future of the United States Supreme Court, and were well aware that Sandra Day O'Connor, prior to retiring in 2005, uh, was frankly kind of a weak need, uh, milk toast type Republican. I wouldn't even call her conservative, because remember, before 2005, Sandra Day O'Connor had made a series of weak knee, terrible decisions, really, that were lefties. She upheld Roe v. Wade uh, in the decision of uh, you know, uh, Planned Parenthood versus Casey in 1992. 
In the Grutter versus Bollinger case in 2003, uh, she wrote the majority opinion that basically said that even though it's illegal to discriminate on the basis of race, it was okay to have affirmative action at the University of Michigan Law School for like another 20 years, just judicial activism uh, by the majority opinion written by Sandra Day O'Connor. And, you know, in 2005, she also wrote another decision involving uh, student prayer at public high school games violating the Establishment Clause, which, again, had nothing to do with history. She was also known for, like, multi-part uh, interest balancing. And there's no doubt in my mind that if Sandra Day O'Connor uh, stayed on the Supreme Court from 2005 through 2008 and were on the court when the Heller case was decided, uh, we would have gotten a much different result than we got in Heller. Why do I say this? Because you see at the same time that Sandra Day O'Connor was retiring from the Supreme Court in 2005, and then President George W. Bush was nominated to that empty seat, initially at least, Harriet Myers. We see Dick Heller. Dick Heller had sued the District of Columbia over their uh, handgun licensing rules and their refusal to allow him to register a personal handgun in his home. Uh, and he had commenced that lawsuit in 2003. So in 2003, you have Dick Heller suing the District of Columbia, uh, arguing that he had a Second Amendment right to have a gun. It was an individual right. In 2005, Sandra Ray O'Connor had re retired from the U.S. Supreme Court and Harriet Myers had initially been nominated. Now, when that occurred, um, various people made public comments against Harriet Myers. And this is where Mark Smith plays a role because on the cover of, at the time, highly influential, and it's still influential, but at the time it was particularly influential, on the cover of the Washington Times newspaper, after the nomination of Harriet Myers, while her nomination was still pending, the following quote could be found on the cover of the Washington Times by Mark W. Smith. Check it out right here. Quote, what a stupid, stupid mistake, said Mark W. Smith, a member of the Conservative Federalist Society who has actively supported Mr. Bush, but wants to see the nomination withdrawn. Mr. Smith said, quote, you cannot fix this for 25 years, period, close quote. That was from the October 2005, October 2005 cover of the Washington Times, one Mark W. Smith I'm happy to say that over a period of time, Mark Smith from just went from being the cover of, uh, from being on the cover of the Washington Times to a proud, handsome YouTuber with actual real hair. So obviously, uh, not, it was not only me. Of course, many other people flagged the issue that Harriet Myers was not an appropriate pick uh, to replace Senator Dale O'Connor. And I'm happy to report that George W. Bush withdrew, or I should say, that Harriet Myers herself withdrew her nomination and decided to leave that seat vacant which promptly caused George W. Bush to nominate to that slot Justice Sam Alito, Justice Samuel Alito, who obviously has been very strong on many issues. It was Justice Alito who not only um, wrote the decision in McDonald and has been a staunch supporter of the Second Amendment start to finish, including, of course, joining the majority in the Bruin case as well as, of course, the Hiller case. But as you can see, that had Sandra Day O'Connor's husband not taken ill with Alzheimer's in 2005, Sandra Day O'Connor would have stayed on the U.S. Supreme Court and would have been that fifth vote in 2008 in the Heller decision, which I can assure you, given her track record uh, on affirmative action, on First Amendment issues, on abortion issues, she was the ultimate squish, weak-kneed Republican, and I'm not even going to say conservative. She was a weak-kneed Republican, not even a weak-kneed conservative, but a weak-kneed Republican. And there's little doubt in my mind that we would not have gone that originalist masterpiece piece of text first and then history second, which we got from the Supreme Court uh, opinion in Heller written by Justice Scalia. If O'Connor were the fifth vote on that court instead of Justice Alito, I'm sure the Heller decision would have been watered down uh, in a way that we would not have appreciated. I can also assure you that if she was on the court as the fifth vote instead of Justice Alito, she would have brought interest balancing and tears of scrutiny and would have had a weighing of interest and allowing the government to override our individual right to keep in arms in the name of some compelling state interest. There is no doubt in my mind that Senator Day O'Connor on the Supreme Court in 2008, if Heller was when Heller was decided, would have screwed up that decision royally. So, so of course, it goes without saying that it was sad that Justice O'Connor's husband came down with dementia and Alzheimer's and she had to step aside uh, to take care of him. There's, you know, we don't wish any person ill will or, or that kind of uh, illness 
um, that's no good. But with that said, it was no doubt that having Justice O'Connor step down and be replaced by Justice Sam Alito uh, made a huge difference and allowed us to um, get the Heller decision and a lot more after that. So the question is, to what degree did comments such as mine on the cover of the Washington Times at that critical moment, uh, to what degree that played a role in Harriet Myers uh, withdrawing her nomination and giving rise to Sam Alito? Um, I guess no one really knows for sure, except maybe Harriet Myers and President Bush. Certainly never, nobody ever told me specifically uh, that I caused anything, but I can assure you at the time, I got many phone calls and comments from many people in Washington uh, thanking me for uh, my quote about the problem with nominating Harriet Myers. And I'm happy to say that getting Sam Alito on the Supreme Court was a huge, huge benefit and made a big difference, not just with Heller, but also with McDonald in 2010, Caetano in 2016, and obviously uh, Bruin uh, in 2022. And of course, Rahimi, which we talked about Rahimi before, uh, being a good originalist decision, notwithstanding the fact that Mr. Rahimi himself was found to be a danger and could be disarmed. Uh, but most of you out there watching these videos don't have violent uh, records uh, like Mr. Rahimi did. So uh, again, as we've talked about in other situations, people that have been found to be a violent danger to themselves and others are going to be disarmed. That's that's going to happen uh, whether we like it or not. And of course, we do want that to happen because dangerous and violent people are the greatest danger to our right to keep in arms because when they go out there and do stupid things and violent and evil things like shoot up schools uh, or kill a bunch of people or murder people, it is those uh, sensationalistic type murders and crimes that give rise to further calls for gun control. And it's an excuse for the anti-gunners who want to disarm all Americans uh, to try to pass more gun control laws. So we do want to make sure that the evil, violent uh, terrorists and psychopaths among us are disarmed because they, in many respects, pose the greatest danger to our right to keep and bear arms. So there you have it. Again, uh, without Alzheimer's and dementia in 2005, Justice O'Connor stays on the Supreme Court, and we have a much different Second Amendment jurisprudence, I suspect, without Sam Alito on the Supreme Court. So uh, from a perspective of Second Amendment jurisprudence, I think we were much better off getting rid of uh, Sandra Day O'Connor and replacing her with Justice Sam Alito. And I'm certainly glad that when Harriet Myers was nominated, uh, she withdrew her nomination after the public outcry, uh, which included voices such as my own. All right, folks, there you have it. You got to understand these historical connections and this history involving our right to keep arms so we can continue to protect this and the rest of our Constitution going forward. Make sure you subscribe to this channel here at the Four Boxes Donner. Don't forget to follow me on X at Four Boxes Donner. And we will see you again soon here at the Four Boxes Donner. Orders up. Table 2A.